Assalamu alaikum. I had a video planned this week that was going to be funny and poke gentle fun at the different clothing that Europeans and Arabs find appropriate for this kind of weather. And then two earthquakes hit Syria and Turkey. <laughs> thousands instantly and that little observation didn't seem quite so funny anymore. While the snow falls in Amman and we commune around the soba drinking our sahleb and enjoying a snow day with our family, it is hard not to look out of the window at the snow and think of all of the thousands of people in Syria and Turkey who are currently going through incredible crises. And as the icy weather sets in, Rescue efforts are hindered and in some cases non-existent. طبعا هذا الفيديو ما بعرف إذا دا موت ضل عايش بلكم كل شيء فين الحمد لله كل شيء هاي تحت الأنقاض والناس يعني جد أكثر من من يمكن عيلتين ثلاثة أربع عيال من إحنا وعيلتك سمعني والجيران تبعتنا الله يعين in the description box, I had left links for charities that you can donate to. And I really hope that while you watch this video, if you have not done so already, you will consider donating and helping in any way that you can. And I'm sorry if anything I say comes across as harsh or brash, it's because I am reacting to the situation. And um, please take things with a pinch of salt. I feel so strongly about what's going on. And um, it's not a time to stay silent or to take too much time to plan what I want to say, I just want to say it. For over a decade, Syria has been an open wound on the world's map. Year by year passes and the world keeps turning, the wound keeps getting bigger. <laughs> And we can't keep track of who is fighting whom. Is it Sunni versus Shia, the Free Army versus the Republic, the Kurds, ISIS, Hezbollah? And with foreign intervention from Russia, Iran, America firing from the sky, it has become a playground of all kinds of human destruction. Fast forward and we have mass immigration, a refugee crisis, the death of millions and even more evacuees. And then there was silence. Covid came and we forgot all about Syria. The sanctions and the separation from the rest of the world made them exist alone in this shadow while they couldn't even access food or vaccinations. It became a forgotten land, remembered only by war. Never mind the people who were continuing their lives, living, breathing, existing and trying to go on and live, live some kind of semblance of a normal life. Syria, the land of culture, the land of civilization. Some say that there was established the first human settlements. There was Damascus, the first capital city, the trade routes, the food, the role of government. All of this collapsed to the point where we only associate Syria with war. And in our forgetfulness, nature yawned, reminding us of Syria. 90 seconds was enough to remind us of our stupidity and our foolishness and our selfishness. And while we have been killing each other, in 90 seconds, nature reminded us of how small we really are. But of course, it's always the most vulnerable that suffer the most. This morning, I was watching a video <clears throat> of a rescue worker who had been working solidly for hours to get a 12-year-old girl out from the rubble of her building. Alhamdulillah, as salami Alhamdulillah, as salami but what he didn't understand, they were all dead. And they had been dead that entire time. Death has become so normalized and natural and yet extreme in all cases. Where is our conscience? Now is the time to act. We have to think about the people who are currently underneath buildings without any aid getting to them. أولاد في عم نسمع أصوات اللي بعدهن أحياء بس ما ما في شيء يطلعوا ما في حدا يطلعوا ما في آلة. There's no one there to take them out from underneath the rubble. 
let alone the 72 hours that we keep hearing on the news. The 72 hours is the most important. First three days are critical in a rescue operation. These first hours are vital. 72 hours is statistically the most important, the most crucial time to get people out. And at the same time, 72 hours, what does 72 hours mean to you if you physically, if people can't get to you by road, if you physically don't have the machinery to get people out from underneath buildings? <laughs> And at the same time, they're facing one of the biggest snowstorms. Temperatures are freezing. No food, no shelter, an international embargo, an economic crisis, living and dying under destruction and snow. What they are facing is unimaginable. <laughs> Aid is struggling to reach Syria. They do not have the tools and the machines to dig survivors out from underneath rubble. People stand around the rubble of their building knowing that their family is inside and knowing that there's nothing that they can do about it. Their hopelessness and silent trauma lacing their delivery of the facts. We know they're in there. We can't do anything about it. And the number of those that have been killed cannot really be estimated, not only because of the very slow reaction due to lack of support and lack of infrastructure and lack of machinery, but also because support is being divided based on lines drawn in sand. We must do what we can financially and by sharing and spreading as much awareness as possible. We have to do our best to help the people of Syria and of Turkey and to show them that we do care and that they haven't been forgotten. So like I said at the beginning of the video, I have linked um, places that you can help and ways that you can support in the description and please feel free to um, leave any other anything else that I have left out in the comment section and um let's pray for syria and turkey <laughs>